for joining me. Hope you're all doing very well. Today we are having a look at another race car from Tamiya. This is the 124th scale Jaguar XJR9 LM. So a bit of a breakdown. It's, it's a Jaguar obviously, uh, but the LM at the end is the Le Mans designation for the 24 hour race in France. This car also raced in the World Sports Car Championship, but it was slightly different to the one that raced at, at Le Mans. And it raced between, I believe it was 88 and 91, and then they swapped out for the next model. This car was built or prepared by Tom Walkinshaw Racing in accordance with the FIA's C1 classification and as you can see from the box art it's got the v12 engine with this kit you can build three models they all look the same apart from the numbering and the driver's names so if you do have a particular favorite driver from the group then you can go ahead and, and build it to the spec that that driver had it but the plastic should all be about the same. The box art, I do have a minor complaint about it. It makes it look like the back end is in fact transparent, the engine deck, to the point where you can see what's going on in there. It's not, it's a solid uh, plastic piece, so you're, you're not going to see, you're not going to see that. But minor complaint, it shows off that, hey, this kit's got the full interior and all of that niceness. So that all being said, we're going to go ahead and have a look and see what we do get in the box. So first thing that I found in the box was this marking sheet. It actually says that it was prepared for the 1988 race. It tells us where all the decals go. And then down at the bottom, decals are for cars number one are marked A and B. Number two, uh, B for car two, and C for car three. And all the rest are common. So I'll give you a bit of an example. A is decal 66, B is decal 67, and C is decal 68. Whereas something like these uh, Jaguar, pieces on the rear wing, they're common in the three cars. And then on the back, a little bit about how to apply decals and something in Japanese about Tamiya's paints and cements. So, handy little sheet to have. The main instruction booklet looks like this. You've got your standard, uh, you know, paragraph of basic history and then you get right into the build so similar to the lotus and your armor interior kits it's all about those sub assemblies so you build up the cockpit it's not a monocoque in these cars because they are the enclosed c1 uh, endurance type and you build up the engine the rear suspension to the engine as we can see up here in step six and then that some assembly sub assembly goes in with the appropriate uh, braces then you add the exhausts and whatnot then skipping over a few steps we get the bodywork start putting that together there is quite a substantial amount of clear plastic in this obviously for windows and the headlights and what have you. Getting all them mounted up, then mounting the bodywork to the car. And there's a little bit here about how to mask off the front so that you can paint that. The, I believe, I believe the technical term is lavender. Um, I nearly said purple, but somebody might get upset that I've said purple and not lavender, so. There we go. And then same as the Lotus, how to apply the dry 
transfers, uh, the slightly different ones to the supplied rubber tires. And notice up here, World Sports Car Champions as well. I just noticed that. I knew they did it with this car, but I hadn't noticed it. Rubber tires, similar to the ones in the Formula One kit, uh, the Lotus, just a different size and shape because of the different regulations. And again, they've got a mold seam down the middle that's gonna need taken off. Although the way the body shell is on this with it all being enclosed, it's not gonna be as noticeable, but it's up to you guys how you wanna do that. I'm probably gonna take it off just so, just because these, these tires are actual rubber. So when you start to get abrasive with them, do it in the direction of travel. Um, when you start to get abrasive with them, they actually start to look like they've been raced. Um, so I'd suggest quite a fine abrasive and use more time rather than an aggressive one that's going to put grooves and whatnot in there. And then in here we've got four very small, I think they're pins rather than screws. I can't see a thread on them if there is. And some poly caps for mounting up the wheels. First frame here is the clear sprue uh, for the headlights, things like that. So these are the actual lenses for the headlights, as well as the front window, the canopy, two side windows, two headlights, and two brake lights. Where my right pinky is right now, I'm not 100% what that is. It may be for like a camera on the roof or something like that, because the, the late 90s, or sorry, the late 80s, early 90s was when we were starting to get better with the onboard footage. And definitely looking at the picture on the front of the instructions, that seems to track reasonably well as to where that should go. Next up, we have the floor of the car. So as you can see, it's a one piece floor. We've got some of the suspension uprights here already mounted. I imagine this is probably gonna go to the rear of the car in some way. We've got the rear spoiler, which has a very nicely molded gurney flap on it. Then we've got, this is part of the side skirt, I believe. If not, it's gonna be part of the engine cover. Some suspension parts, a couple of exhausts. The steering wheel is broken on this. That being said, it's an old kit and getting a piece of plastic or something to replace that. It's not gonna be all that difficult. And yeah, this is part of the top of the engine cover, I believe. But I mean, other than that one issue on the steering wheel, which again, I think is more due to age than anything else. All these bags were sealed when I got the kit the box itself wasn't, so nothing too shabby. And then wheels as well. But everything, I mean, everything looks good on it thus far. Here we have the main part of the body shell. It is split into two halves. So there's the front end, which is not removable, and the back end, which is, it's, all very nice looking. Um, it's very thin as well, which is good. So you, where, where you can see panel edges, it's not gonna be chunky looking. And then all the ejector pin marks and stuff are on the inside, obviously as well. But everything looks nice and clean. The panel lines are, are nice, they're not too deep, they're not too wide, but they are such where if you get some panel liner or any other wash of your choosing, they're gonna look 
very good, especially around this back cover was actually removable. Uh, to get into the rear wheel, it was there for aerodynamic purposes with the vent to allow some air in for the brakes. But, oh, very nice there. These are the, where I think those louvers went on was ahead of the rear wheel cover because the radiators are in and around this area of the vehicle. So next up, we're, we're down to just two more sprues now. We got the seat with the molded harnesses. We got our radiators, one for oil, one for water. We got an intercooler here, I think. I think the car was turbocharged. No, it wasn't, it was naturally aspirated. So I think we'll have like maybe two oil and one water, something along. Those lines, I believe that this part is the firewall. And then some extra odds and ends. These these silver sprues are all your interior parts. You're gonna have things like I think these are the brake hubs. Something along those lines. But all looks very good. Nothing nothing I can see that's worth complaining about given given the age of the kit, you know, if it was a brand new, a brand new kit, I would point out every, every issue, but for a kit at this age, it looks magnificent. All the punch out pin marks, like you can see them on the backs of this seat here and the radiators up here, they do have those, but you're not gonna see them because these go behind things. You do have the mounts up top for the hoses on these radiators as well, but no actual hoses are supplied. So if you want to be a bit extra and make those yourself, then by all means, essentially. All right. So this is our seven liter V12 engine and the gearbox with a little hole there for the drive shafts. We've got our brake discs, which I'm gonna presume point out this way to be the outside so that we don't have the pin marks. We've got some exhausts. I don't think you need to separate those from each other. I think that is correct with the way they go to the floor. And then another two exhausts here, which actually Looking at them, these, the bottom end where my middle finger is, is going to mount to where my other middle finger is, and then kind of click into the, the block so that everything lines up perfectly. A couple of suspension parts, you know, kind of the valve heads and stuff like that. And then on the covers here, we can see it does say Jaguar V12, and it's pretty darn eligible. So when you get a wash in and around that and get a bit of paint on it, that is gonna look lovely. Then we've got our uh, pulley system here for the fan belt and the crankshaft and oil and water pumps and stuff like that. We've been through all the plastic on the kit, now it's time for the decals. One thing to point out and make abundantly clear about the decals on this kit. When the car was raced, it was in a tobacco sponsor's livery. I believe the brand was Silk Cut. So, what that essentially means is that Tamiya weren't able to license that part of the livery they had to kind of go without. I don't know if this is the correct non-tobacco livery, but it certainly looks very nice. And it's certainly one that I've seen on a die cast metal model that I had when I was a kid. So no complaints, it's gonna make an attractive model 
just if you're if you're one of those people where everything has to be 100% spot on I would do a bit of digging and find out because I don't I don't recall specifically when tobacco advertising was outlawed specifically in France I know it was in the mid 90s that I first became aware of it uh, around about 94 when uh, McLaren started writing McLaren where it should say Marlboro and things like that. Aftermarket decals are available though. So right here we've got our driver's names. We've got John Watson, Raul Bossel and Henry Pescarolo. Jan Lammers, Johnny Dumfries and Andy Wallace. And Martin Brundle and the Dane John Nielsen. Our C1 logos here, which are mandatory with the FIA around about that time, especially in multi class racing, to designate what it is. This number three has something on it, but it just came off. Never mind. It was a little bit of a sticky sum sum, but it's fine. The decals are Tamiya Homebrews, copyrighted in. 1989 the paper is relatively thin although it's a bit a bit on the firm side everything looks fine though I, again same as the lotus slight yellowing but like we're talking 1990 till now is 30 years almost or yeah 30 years this year so this these have been sitting for a while. We know that it goes yellow over time. Not, not a manufacturer issue, just an it's an old kit issue. But certainly good enough for my purposes. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna let that hold me back when I get to be building this. And then I'm not gonna take the cover sheet off these because I'm worried that I've ruined the good year ones for the Lotus. We have our eight Dunlop logos for the tires but there's four Dunlops and there's four Denlocks so I don't know if that's just Dunlop used Denlock in another country for their advertising or something like that yeah it goes it goes one Dunlop to one Denlock so I think that's maybe just the specification of the tire just having a quick look at the box art this is what the car looked like when it went racing so we've got the yellow stripes that go over it and it's got masking instructions for this lavender part we kind of got an x-ray view of how everything's going to look with the suspensions and the brakes and it does have drive shafts in the kit it looks like or sorry these are going to be the um Pull push rods for the steering system and then a front and side shot of the x-ray view just to give us an idea of where everything is supposed to go so I could grab this bit of plastic so, some of these older kits the boxes aren't big fans of me so they don't stand up so, we've got another kit review for the Tamiya XJR9 Le Mans version. Um, this car actually won Le Mans as well, um, as well as the World Sports Car Championship. Looks like it's going to be a good kit. It does show its age in places. However, comma, I knew when I bought it, this is a 30 year old kit. It's going to be made with 30 year old technology. And there's a good chance that it was out of production relatively quickly after, after um, it was initially released. It's not like the Tamiya Panther that's been around for the longest time since the seventies. I think the, Tamiya Panzer, uh, Panther A has been out, but 
people like Panther Ace, they keep buying it. Motorsports kits, I kind of feel like they would stop producing it because sales would decline eventually. So that's just my, my thoughts on why it's out of production. I don't think it's out of production necessarily because it's a bad kit. And definitely once I do build it up, I will be sure to show it off to you guys. I think uh, the, I've got a McLaren MP48 coming in. I think that's going to be the first uh, Formula One car that I tackle um, because it was Ayrton Senna's last McLaren and it was also one of the first cars that I ever saw racing as a boy. I think I, I, think I started watching Formula One on and off through 93, 94 and 95 and then really got into it in 1996. So, anyway, I have taken enough of your time, I feel. Certainly, thank you for uh, spending it with me. I have enjoyed the pleasure of your company. If you do have any questions, comments, or concerns, do feel free to hit me up in the comments. I do try and answer everyone as much as I can. Um, and I will catch you next time. Go ahead and hit the uh, like and subscribe button. If you hit the bell icon, you'll get a notification as soon as something new goes live. All right. Thank you very much. Have a good one. Bye-bye.